Well, what have we here? That's exactly what I was wondering. Uh, we've been digging at the Worthington Diamond Mine and we've been uncovering some lamperite. There's about three to four feet of overburden where we're digging near the contact zone here recently. And after you remove the overburden, there's maybe an inch or two of clay with jaspers in it. Jasper are all these rocks you see around here. Jaspers come in about 26 different shades of color, you know, from red to brown to tan and white and all. So, so there's overburden, which is, they, the locals call it a crawfish clay. It's just a worthless dirt. And we remove that, and then we hit this layer of gravel with clay, and we get rid of that. We found out there's not diamonds in it. But then that is the cap to the lamperite, and lamperite is the diamond-bearing igneous rock that was intruded into a shallow sea eons ago. And when that volcanic material, well, there was earthquake faulting along a weak line here that goes well, in southwest Arkansas that goes like from the crater of diamonds at least three miles north because counting the crater of diamonds there are eight known diamondiferous intrusions and the diamonds come from the diamond stability zone over a hundred miles deep and that so there's earthquake faulting that allows that volcanic material to spew up from below. It's propelled by CO2 gas and water or steam is what propels it to the surface. And it came up at a speed of between Mach 1 and Mach 2. So almost, you know, as much as twice the speed of sound. Uh, so it was moving when it came and it hit a shallow sea and all that hot molten rock hit water and I imagine there was a steam explosion from that. And then everything blew up into the air thousands of feet most likely from that steam explosion and then it settled back down and when it busted to the surface it, it made kind of a funnel shaped or martini glass shaped pipe they call it. Uh, so now we went back and removed the overburden and that little bit of clay uh, with the gravel and we got into our lamperite <clears throat> and I noticed a lot of the lamperite we were digging had it would fracture almost in cubes and along the edges were uh, black staining a purplish black and I know at the crater of diamonds I I found a piece of uh, magmatic olivine lamperite MOL and ask a geologist with uh, Arkansas Geological Survey out of Little Rock, he's retired now, but I asked him, what is that black, purplish black staining on there? And he said, that's a manganese staining. So I figured when I was finding this lamperite that apparently after it settled and cooled, it cracked, just small fractures in it, enough to allow something to leach down in there and stain the sides of those chunks of lamperite. And I assumed it was manganese because that's what I had heard just a, a short ways from here at the Crater of Diamonds. Uh, but then as we did more excavating, we brought a bulldozer in to remove the overburden and an excavator started digging and he started hitting big chunks of this purplish black rock. It's actually a layer of it. And I think it's really cool. It, it feels light to me, so it's not dense. And that's what threw me off at first to see what it is, because manganese is dense. And so I was trying to investigate. I wanted to know what it was. So I started collecting samples of it this is not just stained on the outside, it's all the way through. These are a solid chunk of this black purplish rock that is in a layer on top of there. In fact, let me, let me wet it some. Now, isn't this a good one? I mean, wow, that is like my best specimen. Look, I hope you can see the purplish black color here. I wish the sun was out. 
what geologists do a lot of times, they like to wet the rocks that they're analyzing because these have dust from, they were dug up and there was a bunch of dust and dirt there. So they like to wet them and then look at it. And it really brings the color out more. Now this, there's kind of like layers of it in here, but that's solid right there. Hate to break it up, but anyway, um, I was fascinated by it. I found a different rock and I thought, what is this? And one way to tell is color, but color can be deceptive too. What geologists suggest you do is called a streak test. Now, no, you don't <laughs> pick one up in your hand, run around naked with it and try to figure out what it is. Not that kind of streaking. You uh, get a tile like a kitchen tile or bathroom tile. Uh, my wife had these, she liked them and made coasters out of them. So I st stole this to do a streak test. So what you do, wow, this is crumbly, wow. Um, so you take it and you rub it along the back of a tile and you see what color streak it makes. And then you look in the book and uh, the streak is the identifying mark. So this is a yellowish brown streak or brownish yellow. And a mineral that fits this description, this color, it's friable, you know, it breaks up real easily. I hate to ruin my pieces, but anyway, they are crumbly. Um, limonite slash gothite. And I was perplexed. Uh, how is that in igneous material? Well, it's post-volcanic mineralization. So after the lamperite was intruded and it cooled, or maybe it wasn't all the way cool, um, the waters were back on top of it in the shallow sea and maybe it was still bubbling hot for a while and gravels washed down from the Washita Mountains. Washita is spelled O-U-I-C-H-A. It's an Indian word. The Washita Mountains, about 20 to 30 miles north of here, but that shallow sea with the tidal action brought rocks that were once angular when they were 20 or 30 miles north of here and they brought them down with tidal action and then they were all smooth that's where we get our jaspers and navoculite all the gravels around here uh, you know i've got all this gravel around here well this is a common rock in this area because these rocks came out of the washita mountains and it was the shallow sea and tidal action and erosion that washed them here that that's a long way for a rock to roll but i guess they were rolling stones <laughs> um, so when these rocks washed in iron came with it and sometimes in uh like creek beds a whole bunch of jaspers and navoculite would gather in a, a creek and then iron would leach in there and make conglomerate. This is nat nature's concrete. Uh, you can find conglomerate quite a bit around here from here all the way to Nashville, Arkansas. This is a Tokyo conglomerate. In fact, there's a town between here and Nashville called Tokyo. And I'll have to take you there sometime. There is a a building in Nashville, Arkansas, made with conglomerate. You know, instead of bricks or stone, they use chunks of conglomerate to build it. And there's other little houses and other buildings around, but that's the biggest building I know of, and it's right on a main street in Nashville. It was built in the 30s. I'll, I'll take you by and show you and give you the whole history of that. But right now, we're talking about Gothite Limonite, and while I was still trying to figure out what this stuff is, I wrote to uh, Doug Hansen with the Arkansas Geological Survey out of Little Rock, and he helped me narrow it down to uh, a limonite gophite. And I asked, well, you know, how did it get here, and, and why is it here, and 
I also figured out it's, I got an email from him, I thought I'd read it to you. I also figured out <clears throat> this layer is right on top of the lamperite and that's why it stains everything down. Here is a piece, so the crawfish clay, three or four feet was removed. This is the layer of clay, oh, it's still hooked by a root. <laughs> the clay and gravel that sits on top of the limonite gothite and then under it is our lamperite. So this leached in there, there was so much iron in the ocean, in this shallow sea, so much iron it made a layer of iron. And that's what gothite is. Uh, it's a solid chunk of, of iron, but it's friable because it's got other things in it. Uh, before I forget, I'll read his email in a second, but I found these rocks. These are jaspers, the novoculite, that's normally like this, well normally like this, and it has been stained on the outside with this iron. So uh, iron stained jasper. I'm sure if we hit it with a rock and broke it, it would be just a narrow, I mean, a small, thin coating of iron on the outside of, it would look like this on the inside, Jasper. So that's kind of neat to me. <laughs> uh, so here's another piece. This is the clay from the overburden. This is the gothite and the lamperite is right under it. That just came right out of the contact zone. Here's another piece that has the, what they call crawfish clay on the top, and then that's your gothite, and the lamperite starts right under it. You can just see it so much better when it's wet. I'm not a rock licker, but I'll, I'll pour water on it. That proves I'm not a real geologist, and I'm not a geologist, I'm just an old prospector, and I just find some neat rocks along the way. Uh, the man running the excavator saw me jump in and grab a bunch of these as he was digging them up. And he said, is that what you're looking for? And I said, no, 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 no. I'm looking for diamonds. I just found some cool rocks and wanted to grab them before you buried them. So th this is another piece. That's clay on that side. And then this is just solid, solid gothite. So let me read what Doug Hansen with uh, Arkansas Geological Survey at a Little Rock wrote. Um, I sent him pictures and described it and told him the results of the streak test. He said, good finds, Glenn. The iron enrichment is due to water percolating through the gravel. The water chemistry was rich in iron and manganese weathering from the Washita Mountain area and older Cretaceous units. So it was in place post deposition of the gravel and sand. So anyway, I just thought, I didn't want to misquote him or anything, so I just thought I'd read what he said, but uh, uh, he, he likes it. I invited him to come down, but right now they're moving their office. He's been in for decades, uh, moving across town. Uh, that's the government for you. They're always uh, mixing stuff up, changing things up. But, uh, boy, you just wash a little of the dust off and that color really comes out. I hope you can see it well. I wish the sun was out, but um, I just had a chance to do this right now. This piece is kind of a mix of lamperite and gothite in it. And it's got a lot of cracks and veining in it, but... Uh, Anyway, I just wanted to show you the rocks that I found, and I'm, I'm fascinated. I just love digging and seeing what's down there and finding something different, and uh, then when I find something different, I want to know what it is. I don't know if you remember a video I did back a few months ago. I went up, and there were huge pieces of conglomerate that had been removed off the top of the American diamond mine north of here. And 
I was looking at one of those great big chunks of lamparite and I saw a green mineral on the side of it. I thought, ooh, that is cool. So in a video, you can go back through uh, my Genuine Diamonds in AR YouTube channel. Uh, I went through, I got a uh, hammer and a chisel and I chipped that green mineral off of there. And I contacted uh, my buddy, Doug Hansen. I mean, if you don't know what something is, ask somebody who's smarter or had more schooling about it than you. And he wasn't sure what the green mineral was. The color really threw me. So I sent it to one lab at a university in Texas and a man studying for his doctorate in geology analyzed it and said it's armalkalite a mineral that was first discovered on the moon. And so I did a video about that. Well, <clears throat> I wanted Doug to list Armalkalite. That's the first time it had ever been discovered in Arkansas. And I wanted him to list it in the uh, book of minerals found in Arkansas. And he said, well, before we can do that, it has to be verified. The identification has to be verified by another source. And I... I tried contacting professors of geology all around the state that I knew of that would maybe take an interest and help me out, would have the scanning electron microscope and stuff that I would, that they would need to properly identify it. And I didn't get anybody that could help me. Of course, it's in the middle of the COVID thing and some of them were locked out of their labs and students weren't around to do the project and things like that. So. He knew of a man at Sam Houston University in Texas that was willing to analyze the specimen for me. So I sent it to him and he used a scanning electron microscope that tells you what elements are in there and he determined it was not armalkalite uh, but instead it was limonite gothite. So here we have a green mineral that is limonite gothite and we have a purplish black mineral that is limonite gothite so what i'm saying is you can't always go by color and anyway this this stuff's pretty fascinating to me i think i'm out of water and uh you're probably out of patience uh hearing about my <laughs> ugly rocks but I'm gonna to try to find some pretty rocks to show you. Uh, we found some diamonds already, but we don't wanna release just what they look like, how many and how big so far. But coming up, uh, we will do a reveal when we've got some to spread out. Hopefully, we'll cover the sidewalk uh, at that time too with diamonds to show you. So anyway, I hope you found it interesting. It was a mystery to me. Uh, when I found it, what is this stuff? It really looks different, and I kind of like the color. It's almost, it's a metallic, uh, silvery, purplish black, and uh, I guess there's a reason for it to be metallic. It's iron, so uh, limonite gothite is the official, official name for it, so uh, thanks for joining me, and we'll have more adventures and maybe find other cool stuff, hopefully some amethyst one of these days.